Hello, good day, and welcome back to Go on the Run. And today we're going to continue looking at deployments. So this is going to be deployments part two. And what I want to do here is just show you a few more things that you can do with deployment. And if you read the description or the documentation rather for deployment in the Kubernetes um, docs, you will see that oh, we sort of only scratched the surface. And I want to show you a few more things. Of course, I can't show you everything, and I don't, I won't in attempt to anyway but i want to show you a few more things all right so let's jump in and get started because i'm going to shoot to try and make this video about 15 to 10 to 15 minutes i've been sort of failing in a lot of places with that so let's do this so um maybe i should start with the documentation to Kubernetes documentation and so here in the community space, if you scroll along, so I'm on deployment, and you scroll along to use cases, which we spoke about a little bit um, the last time, right? The following are typical use cases for deployment. Creating deployment to roll out a replica set. We saw that, that using the deployment, it creates replica sets and multiple replica sets as you change the, anything about the path specification. Um, declare the new states of the pod. Well, of course, that come with you know updating the pod specification. It creates a new report, uh, replica set, and you can see it mentions that there. Um, roll back to an earlier deployment revision. We didn't do that, so I'm going to show you. I will be showing you that today. And of course, we know everything about scaling up. Um, but this is more about how you scale. We're not going to spend too much time on that, on that, or talk too much about it really. Um, if you are interested, you can read the documentation. I tell you how it can scale up by a certain percentage. It's ensure that oh, there's only a maximum number of pods and a minimum number of pods. I'm going to mention it briefly, but we're not going to look into how to change that at all. And we can do things like pause, roll out, and continue, resume it, and I'll show you that. And we're going to look at the status of a deployment, so in case the deployment is stuck, so that um, we can roll back if it's stuck. I'm going to talk a little bit about cleaning up old replica sets. So if I were to try and cover all of this, all the use cases here, and show you how to, you know, some examples, it would go over way past that 15 minute, 10, 15 minutes mark. So in this first part, I'll do some of it. We'll do things like creating a few versions and so on. And then in the next part, part three of deployment, I'll wrap up all the use cases and show you things like rollback, versions, and so on. So let's get started and then try to finish on time. And then the second, the third part will be posted sort of immediately for you to um, not miss a beat and continue watching. So I'm going to go back here to my command line. And all I have my, uh, my Kubernetes up and running, as you can see, I'm running my wait command, which you've seen many times before, kubectl, get pods, comma, um, replica sets, and then the deployment, and I want minus output wide. You don't have to have this last part, but um, I just want that to be sitting there and getting me um, self-date. I'm in my Kubernetes um, directory, so I'm going to create a copy. So copy minus recursively, and I'm going to do deployment. And if I tab, that should give me part one. I'll do deployments again, tab, and part one, and I want to call this part two. So I'm just copying everything that we did the last time. And then I'll do CD to deployment, and then I want to go to part two, which is what I just copied. Clean up a little bit and start our VS Code. Now, I've changed my VS Code team a little bit. Um, I sort of saw some videos, and people seem to be using a team that looks something like this. I don't know if it's the exact team or not. Uh, VS Code team, but let me zoom in a bit. But what I wanted to do is to have something that, um, you know, had a little bit more contrast, so hopefully it's easier for you to see. Um, hopefully this works for you. If you prefer the other team that I had, um, let me know. Um, so just you, you guys let me know which team um, you can see better, okay? Because this is all to make sure that though, you can see things clearly. And so if it doesn't work for you, let me know. All right, so again, we have our um, deployment here. So let me zoom out just a little bit so it's not too crazy big. We don't care about the file name that much. You can, If you can sort of see the file name, that's enough. We really care about the content on this side. So what I'll do is to demonstrate some of the things that we talk about is I will create a simple Go application. 
And because this application is so simple, I'm not going to spend time writing it. Well, I'm not going to slow down. You can stop and look at the code. I'll stop and show you all of the code. And you can pause it there, write it. Of course, you can go to the repo and get the code. But this is what the code looks like. So here's our Go math file. And just simple, I have a module called Awesome. So this is the main application. It's very simple, so I'm not going to explain it. Steer it as all, however long you want. Pause here or go find it in the repo. Um, this is the Docker file. And again, we've done this before, so I'm not going to explain it. So take a look at it, pause, or go look at it in the repo. So now let's continue. First thing we're going to do is build our image for this application. And then I'm going to make sure that I add it to my Kubernetes cluster. So this is also you've done before, or we've done before. Let's go to 01, for example. And then, of course, we say this current directory, and let's run build. And this is going to do its thing. It's going to finish pretty quickly, and that's it. Now, the next thing we want to do is to be able to add this to our Kubernetes cluster. Because if we create a deployment with this image, and let's do that, let's go to our deployment file, and we're going to take out these images and just change this to awesome and then as the name of our container and then we're going to say that the image is diversity and awesome and let's now say let's just do huge ctl apply and if we apply this dot deployment we'll see that um, it's going to try and create those containers, but of course, the image is not part of Kubernetes and it's not on Docker Hub, so it can't pull it. So we have to add those images. So this we do K3D in my case, since I'm using K3D, awesome, that's zero, 01 is our image I imported. I showed you how to do the same thing with Minikube, so just follow and do that for Minikube. Again, this stuff we have already done. And once I've done that, notice how my container is up and it's running and everything is okay. So that's great. All right. So some of the things we're going to look at is how we can, we've done scaling already. So just imagine that we did that. We change that to three. And then we, of course, do apply. And we'll see it how the number of containers running is going to change. Of course, the version of the files not gonna um, the image is not gonna change um, but if we were to do kubectl and just like docker we have logs command and what we want to do is get the log for all our containers all containers equal true we want to follow and we specifically want the container that have the attributes or the label app equal stuff so this is going to get us all our containers that run it and you can see um, it's trying to tail those containers and you can see each one of them is saying version on whatever the host it's running on this is empty because we did not specify an environmental variable so let's do that now so for each container you can specify environmental variable and so that's going to be env right that's the name of the environmental variable that we specify in our code the value, let's call it version, you know, v1.0. Of course, if we do that and we reapply, because we've made a change, the change this time is that we have um, environmental variables. And so you can see that we have yet another deployment. Notice when we were changing how many, it didn't create a different replica set. But once we change, we made a change to this section of the deployment, which is the pod specification, it created a new um, replica set. And we saw that in the documentation, it says any change to the pod specification creates a new replica set. Now, how does um, the deployment know that that change? Well, what it does is we can do qctl, and we can say get pods, right? And then we could say minus, um, and if we do this, we can say show labels. And you can see our three pods that are running, in addition to the label that we specify should be created, it also had this other thing called pod template hash, right? Which the hash, if you know, we talked about this a long time ago about how to compute hashes and stuff. This is a hash of this set of um, text there essentially. 
And so that's why anytime you make a change to this, the deployment can detect that, oh, the ash doesn't match, there's a different ash. And therefore, I need to create a new replica set and, you know, basically to use whatever changes and apply whatever changes was there. So that's why it creates a new replica. And it then, of course, tag those um, pods with those changes and now it can, you know, roll them over. Okay. So um, what we can do is do this and then we can say watch minus D this guy. And if we do something like this. And then we do from the command line, we don't have to change everything we want, um, all the changes we want to make to the deployment. It's nice to make them in a the file because if you're working with someone else, you can check that into the repo. So, depending on where your company's policy is, and so other people can just apply those changes. But you can also do them on the command line, like how we're playing around here. We don't have to work with anyone else. We can do it on the command line. So, we can say, like, for example, I want to scale up something, right? And so we want to scale up this deployment. Let's say um, it's currently three, but we want to make it five. And our deployment name is my stack, of course. So we can do that. And we can run this command from the command line and notice how we have five pods running. But of course, that doesn't create a new replica set. So let's scroll down here and we will see we still only have the two replica sets there. All right. So the other thing we can do is change the, the environmental variable because if we can change the environmental variable or value of the environmental variable rather here that's a change to this part specification and that will trigger a different to the creation of a different replica set right remember we have a replica set where the image was the value there was no environmental variable and then we have one where the environmental variable is version one so we can do something like change the number of pods we have running by simply doing kubectl scale. And what I want to do is scale the number of replicas I have running. So I can do replicas and let's say we do five. And what I want to scale up is this deployment. So I can do deployment. And then the name of our deployment is my stack, for example. And if I run this, you see it applied that change and now we have more parts running. But notice we still have the two replica sets that we had before because scaling up the number of replicas, that's the deployment. That has nothing to do with the part specification. It doesn't change the part, just the number of parts. So that wouldn't create a new replica set. But if we were to change, let's say the version number here, now, of course, we can do it from file, but on the file, but again, I want to show you, you can do this on a command line too. Um, we can do kubectl set, and then you can set the environmental variable, image, resources, selector, all that sort of stuff. So let's do env, and I want to do this on my deployment. Ver the environmental variable called version equals to v1.1, for example. And if I do that, I apply a change, and notice how we started rolling over our containers and now we have a different deployment set here. So now we have three deployment sets because that changed this part of the pod template and of course, notice all the hash change from what we had before. What I wanna show now is, so if we do kubectl and logs again, you'll see that our, our pods are picking up the, the pods are picking up the environmental variable, which makes sense, and they're logging it every two seconds. Okay, so that works. All right, so that's it. Thanks for your time, thanks for coming back. If you're new here and you watched the entire video to the end, I did not ask you to subscribe during the video. I let you watch the material, but if you're at the end, consider subscribing if you like the material. Um, if you're not gonna subscribe, but you still have feedback or comment, please do leave them. I love um, getting feedback. Uh, constructive criticism, please, or, you know, um, nothing mean or anything like that. You don't have to do something like that. People who are already subscribed, thank you and appreciate you coming back. Again, thumbs up the video, leave comments, and see you in the next video. Take care, stay safe. Bye.